Hey guys, Link from Zelda here. I've seen a lot of folks making all sorts of funny contraptions out of Zonai parts in this game, but the contraption that I want to show you is not funny. It's just downright practical. I know, boring. But here it is. This takes three parts. It's two angled fans and a steering stick. It costs nine Zonite to assemble from scratch with auto build, but I often just use parts from my inventory or from parts depots in the depths because fans and steering sticks are very common and easy to collect a lot of. This machine is what I use to get around Hyrule 90% of the time. <laughs> I barely use horses. I don't even really fast travel all that much anymore because I don't really need to if uh, where I'm going isn't on the other side of the map. I fly this air bike everywhere in this game because this thing is just that efficient at getting me places regardless of terrain. Now you might be thinking, that's just the green goblin glider that I've already been using, but it's just a bike. This is probably the main reason I'm even making this video. The glider, which is something that a lot of people have built. It's not ideal in my opinion. I mean, it's better than walking, obviously. But in comparison to the air bike design, the glider is generally more unwieldy when it comes to turning. It's harder to land, and it has a few tiny things wrong with its design that will prevent you from doing things that the air bike would have no issue doing. So before I show you how to build it, I want to talk about why you should build it first. Let's start with maneuverability. Both designs make it so that you're always headed slightly upwards, which needs to be compensated for, but the glider is harder to turn than the airbike because you always need to be compensating for its upward trajectory while turning. The airbike only really requires that you ease straight left or straight right with only minimal nudges back towards the ground. Its natural upward trajectory isn't as big of a factor compared to how much the glider really wants to take you in an upward spiral. This makes it a little bit more user friendly in my opinion. There isn't as high of a skill ceiling for piloting the airbike compared to the glider. Landing them uh, though is a different story <laughs> in my experience. And this is a pretty big difference. The air bike can be landed by simply powering it off when you're a few meters off the ground and letting the machine take all the fall damage for you. The glider can do the same thing, but because of the forward momentum not being stopped by anything, the glider almost always tends to flip over, requiring you to flip it back over to resume flight. Now, it always depends on how and where you land, but generally the air bike is very easy to keep upright after landing because its forward momentum is blocked by the front fan, which means that you can easily hop off, grab something like a chest, and then hop back on, no flipping required. Sometimes it does flip over because you can never really be too sure about how things are gonna react to hitting the ground in this game, but once you get pretty good at landing the air bike, Flipping it over on accident will happen considerably less. The glider, on the other hand, is very flippable. Also, one thing that consistently happens with the glider is that even when it's upright, if it happens to be on uneven ground, sometimes you won't be able to access the controls, which requires you to move it to a more level area. This issue does not happen with the air bike. If it's upright, you can take control of it, and it even works when you approach it from the back fan instead of the side. But one more thing on the subject of landing, the most effective way to quickly descend with both flying machines is to quickly power it off and on by pressing B and then A again before you fall off of it. This can be pretty risky, and you need to feel out the appropriate distance from the ground in which this won't just spike you into it. But I found that for some reason, the glider has a much faster descent than the air bike, which makes this strategy uh, much less useful. Another thing that air bike is superior at is transporting Koroks. Now you can pull it off with the glider technically, but the weight distribution makes it so you can only really realistically attach the Koroks bag to the steering stick. And because putting it on the front makes it impossible for you to take off and putting it on the back makes it so you can't even access the controls at all. Your only option with the glider is to put the Korok on the bottom of the steering stick, which makes it even harder to control somehow. Even if you manage to fly to where you need to go with a Korok on the glider, the weight distribution makes it impossible for you to manually descend, which means that you have to drop land, which is even harder now that you have more weight to catch. Meanwhile, the air bike has two reasonable places to attach the Korok to, the front or the back. I prefer the front because it makes it easier to descend manually, but either placement works just fine and doesn't really mess with the handling at all. The Koroks have never been disappointed in my transportation services when I use the air bike, and they always give me five stars on Uber. 
Now the last thing I want to mention before I get to the build tutorial is that both the air bike and the glider are ideal methods of getting around when you want to do things like search for shrines, hunt Koroks if you have the mask on, or just get over a pesky mountain range that's in your way. But the most insanely helpful thing that these flying machines provide is a way to easily traverse the depths. I was able to map out the entirety of the depths in only a few days using the air bike because of one simple thing throwing a giant bright bloom seed at the front of the bike. This single-handedly makes it possible to fly around in the pitch black areas of the depths to look for light routes because you will be able to see cliffs and walls approaching you before you ram into them. Now this is something that you can do with either one of the flying machine designs, but I just wanted to mention it because in my opinion, this is a game changer for the underground exploration potential. The light part that they give you, it only shines directly in front of you, it consumes power, and it contributes to weight, making you fly slower. Bright blooms do not consume any power, they don't weigh anything, and they light up a massive area around you to the point where you can use your air bike as a light source for exploring any area that you wish to land in and walk around. All right, so that's enough talking about it. If you're convinced by my sales pitch to switch from being a goblin glider to an air bike rider, grab two fans and a steering stick, and let's just go ahead and build this thing. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find some flat ground to build on. I like to use these uh, material deposit areas uh, because uh, this is like a little flat area. <laughs> um, so you can get rid of all this stuff by just burning it. Uh, and then we'll be ready to work. So you're gonna need two fans and a steering stick. First thing we're going to do is take the fan, put it fan side down, take the steering stick, tilt it uh, so that it's facing towards you, and then tilt uh, it up like this. So press up on the uh, D-pad. Now, this is where it gets a little finagly, but uh, you want to try and center this as best as you can towards the top of the lip of the fan. Uh, you can use the dot as guidance but sometimes it is deceiving I try and use that pole and try and uh, kind of center it with the top of the fan like the ring area and as soon as it looks good give it a shot now this is not even so we're gonna have to start over and try it again it's a trial and error process I don't know if there's a specific trick to it or not, but I like to use the motion controls to try and get it into as specific as possible of a spot. See there, I use the D-pad. Um, and there we go. Nope. Turned. I can definitely tell that that's not it. Nope. Um, no. <laughs> okay. See, that looked good, but a problem what we're having here is that we cannot actually access the control stick because the fan is actually blocking it which is why we need to aim for the lip the upper lip of the fan now that actually looked good all right so that is what we're looking for i think i want to say that that's exactly it all right sweet so now that it's centered you want to make sure that it's standing like this if it's leaning over then that's no good uh that means you probably put it a little too high up or it wasn't ankled properly now we're going to want to take the second fan and we're going to want to put it parallel uh, with the other fan like this, but we're going to try and aim it and it's a little tricky because you can't actually see uh, the connection point, but we're going to try and uh, use the circles uh, as a guide to put it right on the front. Okay. It looks centered. All right, first try on the first, the second wheel. So this is it. This is the bike. Should be ready for its maiden voyage now. Here we go. So it flies straight. I actually don't have my hand on uh, the control at all. It's going uh, pretty straight. <laughs> it's going a little tiny bit to the left, but in my experience, I feel like no matter what you do with this bike, even if you get it as centered as humanly possible, like down to the pixel, uh, it's not going to fly completely straight, but most of the time you're not going to be uh, just AFKing with this thing, so uh, it should be okay. As long as you can get it as centered as possible to where it looks centered, 
it should fly completely fine. After you successfully build an air bike, don't forget to add it to your auto build favorites so that you can just whip it out anytime you need to fly around without a care in the world. Like I said before, you can spend just nine zonite on it to just make this thing with no materials around, but especially in the depths, fans and steering sticks are almost always available at the parts depot scattered around, and you can easily stock up on both parts by visiting the Terrytown Gumball Machine, which has pretty much every traversal part available just in one spot. Anyway, have fun flying. I don't know how to end this video, so 